Welcome everyone to another observability clinic. Today's topic, Dynatrace mobile app relaunch becoming proactive as an SRE to handle problems. I've been talking about SRE site reliability engineering for a couple of months now, and I'm really excited to have Wolfgang there with me. Hi, Wolfgang. Hey, Andy. Great. Nice. Nice to be here with you. Yeah, great to be actually in the room. Uh, I know the video is a little bit small, but uh, I think the real thing that matters is actually what you see on the big screen. Um, Wolfgang, you've been a principal product manager for Violet Dynatrace now. We had clinics in the past, and I'm always happy to see the latest and greatest what comes out of your team. Right. That's, that's very good to hear. Um, actually, it's a very happy uh, announcement that I can, can make today, mm -hmm. uh, because after years of, of having the uh, classic Dynatrace mobile app, the notification app in both marketplaces, uh, the Google Marketplace, and the, the iTunes uh, Apple Marketplace. Um, we heard, of course, some rumors that uh, the design was outdated and the feature set uh, was not up to date anymore after years of successful operation. Um, and uh, we have a large user base on the mobile app side. Mm -hmm. Um, and it tightly connects to Davis, my original topic, of course, mm -hmm. uh, detecting incidences and sending out alerts. And so we decided in the last year to, to do a complete relaunch uh, of the mobile app instead of um, improving the, the old app um, in, in, in some ways. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, this or today is actually um, the date when we officially relaunch um, the new Dynatrace mobile app with a complete um, uh, redesign and uh, complete uh, overhaul of, of the overall uh, feature set. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So the, and today, just from remember, it's early July 2022. I always want to mention this because we're doing a lot of these videos, tutorials. So people, July 2022 is when the new mobile app launches to make it easier, especially for site reliability engineers or whoever needs to then take care of problems that are detected by Davis. Right. Yeah. And I know you have a couple of slides to explain things, but then the most exciting thing is always the live demos. Hopefully the live demo yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> works out as planned. Yeah. Um, so I brought the end-to-end -end demo with me, mm -hmm. but I would like to just go through some slides to explain what, what you will see today mm -hmm. and what I will do in the demo today. Um, and, and then I will right, jump into the demo Perfect. and hopefully everything works out. Uh, as and as a reminder, folks, if you're watching this on YouTube or Dynatrace University, and if you have questions, a couple of places where you can go, either you can go to communitydynatrace.com. This is where we have our discussion forums. On the other side, obviously, you can always ask your Dynatrace experts through the built-in Dynatrace chat. Last thing, right, you have our names, and I'm pretty sure you figure out a way how to get a hold of us. But with this, Wolfgang, over to you. Thanks. Yeah. Um, as, as I already mentioned, uh, today is a very happy announcement uh, day for me, uh, announcing the, the relaunch of the new Dynatrace mobile app. Um, and um, if we think about the mobile app, it's uh, about becoming proactive um, as an operations or an SRE team uh, to handle incidences and, and problems that Davis detects in real time and to get notifications as, as fast as possible. Um, and uh, by doing that, um, one critical part, of course, is um, to, um, to use your mobile phone. And in the past, we already had a Dynatrace um, mobile app that was able to receive notifications of Davis detected uh, uh, incidences. And today, I will show you how how to, to attach uh, the mobile app, um, the new mobile app to your uh, Dynatrace mobile, uh, uh, your Dynatrace uh, monitoring environment, and uh, how you can leverage uh, your mobile um, device in order to receive uh, Davis uh, incidences. Mm -hmm. And I also like really much here that you start on the left with the SLO, the service level objective. Right. Because this is a big topic I know that you have also been driving over the last years together with uh, your counterparts at Google even, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's a great concept and great to see this so embedded in Dynatrace in Davis. Yeah, exactly. It always starts with a business focus in mind with the SLO. 
um, and with um, site reliability engineering teams uh, that I'm, I'm sorry, I always have to enable my mobile phone again to, to keep it up and, and running. Uh, it, it starts with the um, business in mind and, and with the SLO in mind. And therefore my live demo will start with a, a typical uh, site reliability engineering dashboard. Uh, and then um, I will start to, um, to run a, a problem, a problematic pattern. Um, and uh, to degrade the, the health state of a specific service that I prepared for today. And that um, leads uh, Dynatrace Davis to create an incident, as it is shown here. The SLO, therefore, is of course breached um, and, and shows a violation. Um, it, um, the SLO uh, reaches a, a yellow or red state, depending on the severity of, of the problem. And um, Dynatrace is then sending out the push notification to the mobile app where you can see the mobile app receiving the push notification, showing the um, alert and, and the um, incident indicator here with, with a red number, where you can click on the push notification uh, announcement of the incident. Um, you see, um, you, you can review uh, all the open incidences and alerts uh, directly on your mobile phone in a very mobile-centric design with a um, a management summary of the incident. Um, and, and here on the mobile app, you can drill into the incident. You do the triage of the incoming uh, push notifications of, of the incident itself. And you can right away decide on an actions that you would like to, to take in order to remediate um, or to trigger remediation action mm -hmm. as fast as possible to safeguard your business. That's awesome. Uh, I do have a couple of questions here sure. already, um, but maybe just to keep for you to keep in mind as you do your demo, a lot of people will probably ask if Dynatrace can send me push notifications to the Dynatrace mobile app, can they also send notifications to other tools? I mean, the answer is obviously yes, yes. because this is what we had, creating Jira tickets, creating ServiceNow tickets, and so on and so forth. Of forward. course. Uh, there is, of course, a resonant uh, functionality in Dynatrace. You can, of course, also use uh, a Slack integration, and also Slack has some, some push notification capabilities. Mm -hmm. So uh, either you use the Dynatrace um, out-of-the-box mobile application to receive pushes, or if you prefer, you can, of course, go with your Slack app as well mm -hmm. and uh, directly integrate with Slack, uh, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. And then the second question that I would have is if I have the mobile app, you have the mobile app, many people within an organization have the mobile app, What's the option to actually route the notifications to the right people? Is there any filtering like we have with alerting profiles or something like this? I think this would be yes. something good to cover um, as well. I have that in, in the demo as well uh, and in the slides. Uh, the management zone is the way to go. Perfect. Um, with the filtering uh, on, on management zone basis, uh, each uh, team member or SRE team is assigned uh, with a, a fewer role on a management zone and the pushes are sent out in a management zone aware way. Mm -hmm. So you only get pushes for the management zones that in Dynatrace that you are allowed to see. Mm -hmm. And that's the way to, to filter the outgoing pushes. Awesome. But let's, let's jump into the uh, details of, of mm -hmm. that uh, example. Mm -hmm. um, I will then show um, the live version of, of this dashboard, but basically we will start uh, right away from a dashboard that I built uh, for what I call a payment stake site reliability um, objective uh, dashboard uh, that monitors several backend services uh, that belong to the deployment stake of a payment service. Uh, it also shows some health state of the processes underneath where the uh, payment service is deployed along with uh, the, the reliability SLO uh, and objectives of the individual uh, backend services that the payment service is mm -hmm. uh, dependent on right in, in one uh, dashboard, along with some interesting metrics that Dynatrace out of the box provides like throughput, response time, and, and service errors, and with a top list of uh, the error rate of the individual backend services of that stack. That's basically what, what this um, dashboard shows. Once I trigger the um, 
the incident um, right away, uh, you will see that uh, the the relevant or the the effect that backend services uh, will degrade uh, also will breach the uh, the SLO mm -hmm. uh, the dashboard will show the the breach of course and uh, this um, alert and um, uh, problem indicator on the SLO dashboard uh, will already in indicate that there is a Davis related problem um, that is shown here. Mm -hmm. Uh, we will then jump into the uh, SLO list that is uh, relevant, mm -hmm. and we will directly drill into the problem uh, that uh, Davis uh, finds uh, in, in real time, and, and then jump over to the mobile app that shows the active uh, alert that was uh, pushed in, uh, the blast radius, and the problem category, and the duration for a quick uh, management summary. Of, of the incident. Yeah, right? Just one quick uh, clarifying question here, blast radius. I'm familiar with the term, but maybe not everybody is familiar with the term. Anything? Yeah, the blast radius is basically uh, all the entities that are affected by the uh, incident overall, mm -hmm. meaning that all the backend services that are responsible along with the root cause is collected. And it shows basically um, uh, the the radius in your topology that the incident is actually uh, affecting. Mm -hmm. And Dynatrace collects that automatically. Davis um, walks the topology in order to find that uh, dependencies uh, automatically. Mm -hmm. And the blast radius right now is also that you need to reactivate your mobile phone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's like a watchdog kind yeah, of thing. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, um, and in the details screen, if you click on, on the problem itself, uh, you see the exec summary uh, with the management zone, in this case, Team US uh, shown that uh, the incident was uh, triggered in, in a topology where the Team uh, US is uh, responsible for, and you see the impacted services and the root cause right away directly on your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the nice thing uh, with the mobile app is that you can manage multiple SaaS Dynatrace monitoring environments within one app and uh, along with, with a managed uh, environment side by side. So you can uh, attach your uh, SaaS environments uh, and uh, Dynatrace managed environments within uh, one app and, and receive pushes for, for both. That means I download the mobile app and then I just con configure the endpoints yes. and the tokens yes. and that's it. Yeah. I, I will show that yeah. uh, uh, now. Perfect. And now I'm, I'm right away jumping into the live session uh, and uh, hopefully everything works out as, as planned. Let's see. So the first thing that I have to do is to, um, I, mean, I will show you the, um, the dashboard as promised. So this is basically my, my dashboard that I configured. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the payment service uh, that's all about. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the backend services uh, that the payment service is depending on. Uh, we can also look in, into the um, service itself um, and uh, check the um, service flow just to be sure that, that I uh, mm -hmm. told you the the correct uh, topology here. So the payment service is basically uh, calling a service that I called a risk assessment service. Uh, it's also calling a persistent service and uh, SSO authentication service. That's layer one. It's a very simple stack and it's calling an external service, which is uh, irrelevant for our uh, case here. But basically that, that's the topology. So what we can see here is that the payment service is depending on those three uh, directly um, as, as uh, downstream uh, services. And the dashboard is basically uh, showing that and also that everything is, is working fine. Uh, we have a target value of 99.9 uh, on, on error rate and, and successful um, service requests. And yeah, everything is fine. Now, um, I, I have configured that service in a way that I can uh, trigger and ingest errors. Mm -hmm. And I will do that now. So I have my, my Linux box here. And let me 
go into my folder with the examples. I have a pre-configured stack here with the payment service. And uh, I can tell the, uh, the backend service, not the payment service, but the dependent backend service uh, to increase in terms of errors. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can, we can see that here in my small script that I prepared, basically I'm telling uh -huh. uh, the backend service running on port 8083 on the endpoint config, uh, that it should return 500 errors mm -hmm. for the number of, I don't know, 200 uh, request. service requests yeah, here. Yeah. So that's, that's a configurable service mm -hmm. uh, that reacts uh, upon my control. Mm -hmm. And that's all that it does. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm starting that. It's almost like and we talked about this in the preparation. It's like you build your own chaos engineering tool yes. because you're forcing or asking one of your services to act in an abnormal way. Exactly. And uh, the nice thing of that service is that with one demo service that consists out of uh, 150 lines of Go code, mm -hmm. uh, I can build any kind of uh, complex trace structures. Mm -hmm. So I can build uh, a pure path uh, topologies and trace structures that span across uh, multiple layers, mm -hmm. uh, depending only on my configuration. Yeah. So basically, so, you can like I mean I know this is out of scope now of this, but you have built a demo environment where the demo service you can deploy it multiple times exactly. and add basically two configurations. Who is connected to whom? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's nice. So that yeah. that's exactly how it works. Yeah. And I, in this case, I just created uh, a simple topology with three, mm -hmm. um, with three um, um, backend mm -hmm. uh, services, and um, and now I instructed. You see that uh, there is uh, the payment service calling uh, the backend service. We can also see the the number of calls mm -hmm. uh, that I configured that that are done with the throughput here. So basically, that's cool. Yeah. And we can already see the first uh, we can request already, coming in. With exactly. errors, yeah. We see the first calls. I think it's 14, around 10 requests that I configured uh, per minute. Mm -hmm. So after now, we happen to be a minute after I triggered that incident we see 14 failing requests already. Mm -hmm. uh, we can also check the um, pure paths here. We um, always still talk, call them pure paths, right? Yeah, the traces, now, the actually. The traces, but yeah. it's also nice to know that even though the world is hyped right now with distributed traces, we've been doing this for more than 15, 16 years. And exactly. But yeah. It's it's nothing different uh, if you run it as as an open telemetry trace mm -hmm. works uh, the same way. Yeah. Uh, but you can see here that we have five hundreds mm -hmm. as I instructed the demo service mm -hmm. uh, to be triggered, mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot of those coming in for the next two hundred calls. Uh, uh, if I jump back to my uh, SLOs uh -huh. dashboard, I already see that Davis kicked in here. Mm -hmm. uh, the SLO is already reacting here. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to admit that I set the um, objectives uh, time frame to around very two, yeah, very or very short, two hours or so. Mm -hmm. um, and but the nice thing here is that the Davis engine is directly integrated into mm -hmm. um, uh, this dashboard uh, and, and the SLO functionality, mm -hmm. thanks to Wolfgang Haider, who is responsible on the Dynatrace side to that uh, feature, it's tightly integrated into the Davis engine. Mm -hmm. So once Davis, as you see here, uh, kicks in and alerts on, on those um, uh, incidences, uh, we see the uh, alert indicator here. Uh, what we can, or we hopefully will also see within a minute is, uh, while we are now having two problems open, uh, the Davis engine will analyze the topology and will merge the two problems into one 
incident before yeah. sending out the push notification. Yeah, because I guess the two ones are right, the one where it's actually sending HTTP 500, the other one that is calling it, yes, and it's exactly. then actually getting into a probably also calling HTTP 500. Yeah, perfect, exactly. Yeah. Um, one, one thing I want to yeah. highlight here, I need, again, thanks to Wolfgang Haider, I think we just need to make this a little bigger because it's a really cool capability that we can tie a Dynatrace detected problem, a Davis detected problem to an SLO. And the little uh, warning signal here is almost doesn't give it enough justice because uh, what this really is, and I always um, refer to something another colleague said, Rudy Roy, he said, this is like minority report. Yes. Because it is like pre-crime alerting that Dynatrace has a problem that may not yet impact your SLO. In your case, it is already impacting the SLO, um, but it's basically highlighting that there's something at risk and we exactly, already have a problem. Yeah. Um, we, we could make it a bit more visual, actually. Yeah. Um, if we go and you see mm -hmm. uh, we have the alert notif notifier here, it's already jumped to, to mm -hmm. one back uh, as Davis uh, on the fly in real time merged both um, incidences mm -hmm. into one consistent. You see here that the filtered uh, SLO list shows the mm -hmm. payment uh, service avail availability objective being hit by by the incident, uh, we have a direct drill down into the Davis problem uh, list. Mm -hmm. um, we also see that the merged uh, problem now shows a blast radius of two yeah. uh, because the payment service is the calling service while the risk assessment service is the one service that I ingested the 500 errors mm -hmm. uh, that has a, a impact uh, cascade up uh, to the front end payment service that, mm -hmm. that is called. Mm -hmm. um, and we see that incident here, it's open for three minutes. Uh, we can go into the uh, problem details here. We see that we correctly uh, indicating two uh, problems, or uh, uh, two impacted services here. Uh, we, or Davis, uh, identified the backend service, the risk assessment service as the correct, being the correct root cause. Mm -hmm. We have the drill down here into the failure rate. Uh, degradation that shows the details, which will show uh, obviously the 500 errors and the collected topology uh, that is uh, impacted. Mm -hmm. But now uh, coming back to the original story uh, of our performance clinic is um, the uh, mobile app. And you see here really uh, the, the live mobile phone. That's why I'm always refreshing it, uh, that it doesn't go into sleep mode. And you see that I connected my environment here. If I click on it, um, I see the, the failure rate increase here, uh, the push notification. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not, Clicking it now, uh, yeah, but you just see that the push notification for that problem is mm -hmm. listed on top. Mm -hmm. If I click it, the push notification is, of course, uh, uh, gone. Yeah. I want to show it here to you. Um, and here, the, the push notification leads you on to that uh, problem, actually. And if we uh, click on it, my mobile connection is a bit slow. Uh, you see that... Uh, we get a management summary of, of the problem with the impacted service being the payment service, um, the root cause being correctly shown as being the risk assessment service. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we also see the affected management zones uh, on top. It's a bit small on that mirrored, and I'm uh, screen casting my mobile phone mm -hmm. uh, onto our shared session here. Uh, but you see that um, we have the blast radius shown with the two um, affected topological elements. Uh, we have a nice overview here that shows that the blast radius consists out of two affected services that are highlighted here. Mm -hmm. So there are no affected applications, uh, no affected synthetic, uh, and we could jump back to uh, a web view that sh directly shows the problem in, in the Dynatrace UI, uh, or we, we show a list of all affected uh, entities in case that's a large scale 
incident, which it actually it isn't in this case. What I also wanted to show you is, uh, besides my, my demo, uh, that luckily worked out, um, is that you can list multiple uh, environments here. So once you log in into the mobile app that you can download from, from the iTunes or uh, Google Play Store, um, and you log in with your um, SaaS Dynatrace uh, um, login credentials, uh, we will list all uh, the attached uh, SaaS tenants here. Yeah. That's what, Talk what I talked yeah. uh, before about uh, <laughs> the watchdog functionality. Um, and we will list all the, the SaaS environments that are, uh, are linked to your um, uh, user. Uh, what you can also do here is you can go to uh, the settings and you can uh, directly link a managed environment uh, by clicking the functionality add new QR code. Mm. And in this case, uh, you have to scan a QR code, not handy, but a QR code of your uh, managed environment. Uh, and then uh, the managed environment is automatically uh, attached to that uh, environment, uh, to, to that mobile app. And you can manage your SaaS Dynatrace environments alongside your managed uh, environments if you are in that uh, situation, actually. And that means in managed, we actually have in the Dynatrace UI somewhere an option to generate that QR code? Yes, I can show that uh, as well. Let me jump back uh, to the browser. Our old uh, demo environment, right? So yeah, it's, it's also it's very convenient then that you can just scan it. Pretty uh, simple, yeah. yeah. Um, you you just go to your account mm -hmm. uh, menu. Here you have the entry receive alerts uh, with a mobile app. Okay. You select your platform mm -hmm. like Android. Get to the ah, store. Sorry, yeah. That goes to the store, but they create new token, uh, creating a token. Creating a new token, ah, and here awesome. you get the token that that you have to scan. Um, actually, I, I could scan it now. Let me see. Let's do it. Let's do it. Play. And then also switch back the view, maybe to the other window. Oh, I got it. So ah, we yeah. also see your mobile phone. Good point. Bit of a leg, uh -huh. and now you got the I have the the demo managed yeah. environment. Oh, there's a bit of a leg. Yeah, now you see it. Mm -hmm. um, and the tag underneath the environment name shows either SaaS or okay. managed. Yeah, I think we will change the icon on the left side yeah, in the future to a cloud and 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 uh, yeah, uh, on-premise uh, icon to to make that even more. A visual, mm -hmm. but you see that uh, we have here um, multiple environments, mm -hmm. and we can right away see uh, that there are much more uh, problems going on in, in that uh, other managed mm -hmm. environment. Um, what I also wanted to show you here is that uh, in, in case of a managed environment, uh, you can also uh, modify uh, the managed environment's name. Mm -hmm. And if you have some troubles with the um, public accessible endpoint, uh, because in managed you are running your Dynatrace environment in your own data center, that has to be accessible through the mobile app, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and we are entering here automatically uh, your a configured public uh, yeah. endpoint that is reachable. Uh, but if you have a different one that you configured either through a firewall or a proxy, whatever you use, mm -hmm. that's up to you to decide. You can then uh, manually change that here. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, we are also using here for authentication um, a personal access token that is then listed in, in the list of your 
user's personal access token. You can revoke it, uh, delete it, or recreate it. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and with that, I'm pretty much through my live demo yeah. and through the feature set, uh, what you can do with the new uh, mobile app. And I'm open for questions finally yeah. yeah i think um i think the way we ran this clinic was that i asked a lot of questions uh while we were while you were going through the demo um maybe just some final questions so that means the old mobile app if people have it that's going to be retired ah yeah exactly so um the, the old mobile app and the new mobile app um will reside side by side uh, for the next half year okay. until the end of the calendar year uh, in both app stores. So you can still install the old uh, app uh, along with the new app. The new mm -hmm. app has uh, a nice 3.0 uh, patch mm -hmm. attached to the icon so that you can easily distinguish mm -hmm. um, the new app from the old app. Mm -hmm. Both can run on the same phone. So you can even uh, compare the functionality yeah. um, of both apps running it on, on the same device. Um, at the end of the year, we will delist uh, the old app from the, the App Store mm -hmm. and we will keep only the new app um, in the App Store. Mm -hmm. um, but the old app will still run uh, on your phone because if you installed it beforehand, mm -hmm. it will still uh, run for the next half year. So in summer next year, we will also uh, deprecate and end uh, the backend services uh, that are serving uh, the old app. So from now on, you have at least one year grace period to switch to the new app, basically. Yeah. Uh, I guess and we also do some active reach out, some push notification yes. or whatever it is that we are. Exactly, doing. there is an announcement mm -hmm. in the community in the blog post mm -hmm. that explains that uh, deprecation period and we keep it as smooth as possible. Yeah, awesome. Now, the last question I have, are there, what are the plans from a functionality perspective to your plan to add more features into the mobile app over the next couple of months? Yes, so that was not a, a one-shot uh, release of, of a, a new mobile app. Uh, going forward, we will add um, we, we have an active roadmap uh, on, on the mobile app. We will add a lot of functionality. Um, and uh, one of the next functionalities uh, is that we will attach the, the app application security part mm -hmm. into the mobile app so that you uh, get the, the security incidences right away on your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of uh, minor improvements that we, we will add uh, alongside uh, that major a functional improvement. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the best way to give you feedback is through community .com. Exactly. Um, in the community, there is a feedback channel. It was open already in the last uh, month. Um, and we already received a lot of uh, feedback because the mobile app was uh, in beta phase mm -hmm. uh, for the last couple of months. Uh, and we already received some some uh, very valid feedback that we could incorporate into the GA release of the app that is happening now. Mm -hmm. um, but feel free to use that feedback form uh, going forward uh, to, um, to leave us your, your feedback. And uh, we will, of course, uh, uh, respect that feedback uh, in, in the upcoming uh, feature improvements. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Hey, Wolfgang, I think with this, uh, the only thing I want to ask you is quickly stop sharing your screen because then uh, we get at least a chance to say goodbye and until next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.